Hello and welcome to The Good Witch. This is another Orisha reading, two in one week, which is rare for me. This one is for the Orisha, the goddess of love, Oshun. Because she came up in our Sagittarius reading, and I'm trying to do more teaching. So when they come up in our readings, I'm going to try to educate people on them on who they are and what they need and what they do and clear up any miscommunications about them. I don't know if YouTube's gonna, YouTube's gonna make me um, take it down because I was playing music, so I'll stop. <sighs> okay, so Oshun, yay Oshun, it's the goddess of the rivers. Also the waterfalls and the streams and she flows right back into the oceans. It's where it all comes from. She is very sexual, but I do feel like mainstream media has oversexed her. Her persuasion didn't come from her vagina. Womb is wonderful. It's a magical place. It's the place where life began. And, you know, we can't say enough about how great the womb, the vagina, the woman is. But she is more than that. She does have a very coquettish nature where we'll get there later, but I want it to be known that she is way more than a sexual deity or a deity used to coerce people. You don't, it's not a use what you got to get what you want type of energy when you're dealing with her. Okay. Oshun is the goddess of fertility, beauty, love, art, sensuality, wealth. She's over all of these things. This There's many stories about Oshun. There's many. Let's see. One of the more famous ones is one where she... Okay, so at the beginning of time, she was the only female Orisha sent from Obatala, who would be like Father God. Um, she was the only female sent, and everybody else was male. And she overheard them saying, or one of them saying, that they didn't need her because her gift was to bring sweet water to the earth. One was industrial. I'm not going into all of them right now. One was industrial. One was woodwork. One was iron. One was war. You know, they had it covered. They could do everything, right? One was livestock. One was herbs. They had all this stuff. They had it ready. So all she brought was love and sweet waters. She overheard them say that they did not need her. They could do everything without her. They didn't understand her purpose. So, Oshun being the lady that she is, excused herself from their presence and went and sat on the moon. Okay? So while they were down here building the earth, she left because she's a sensitive being. We're sensitive and females can be sensitive and she's very sensitive. I don't know whether, I can't say they hurt her feelings or she wanted to teach a lesson. Taking every moment as a teachable one, she decided to teach a bit. So she went and sat on the moon and they've been down there and they've been working and they have all this stone, this brick, this mortar. Everything's, they're trying to build and nothing's happening. So they go back to Father God, Obatala. They go back to Father and they tell him, Nothing is working. I don't know why nothing's happening. Why is this not, why are the crops not growing? Why won't the building stay? Why, 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 why is nothing going right? And he asked them, he asked them, where's Oshun? They looked around, they didn't see her. They didn't even notice that she had gone because they were too busy doing their work their masculine work and they were doing that and they were too busy to even notice that she had gone. So they were like, we don't know. We don't need her anyway. And they was like, he said, okay, go get Oshun. I was like, well, what do we need her for? 
just go get Oshun. So after a little bit, of, they went up there. Oshun, can you please come down from the moon? Can you help us? Nah, I'm good. I'm staying. I don't want to do it. Y'all got it. Y'all don't need me. So it took some, they had to court her, court her down off the moon. We're sorry. We need you. Come help us. We need your sweet waters. Yada, yada, yada. So they wooed her down off the moon. She could have easily come. And I'm, with her, with a coquettish type nature, it's not that I don't want to come. It's that I want you to want me to come very badly. It's not sex. So she came down off the moon. She brought her sweet waters. The rivers flowed. The waterfalls fell. The streams and the brooks started to babble again and they flew into the ocean and things got moving. Crops began to grow. They used the water to build the buildings. They used the sweet water to grow the crops. The animals started to mate so that agriculture could continue to happen, so that farm life and life could continue to happen because they wanted to mate. No one wanted to mate without love, dear. Like she's not the goddess of sex, dear. She's love. Not, not um, possession, but love. They're different. Love and possession have very little in common. But anyway, she was the goddess. She brought love. She was over love and fertility. How can you have a planet that runs with no fertility? How can you have a planet that you want to be on without beauty? How can things keep going if there's no love? If sex is just mechanical and it's for a purpose all the time, then who would want to do it? It's just another job. Right? So sensuality and sex are very different. So she is that. So she fuses. She... Um, also, it's the goddess of sweet things like love, and she offers balance. All the masculine energy needed the female balance to keep the world going. Does not, does not work with one part. Masculine and feminine, or whatever you want to call it, these energies have to coexist to keep the world afloat. Okay. Um, she likes perfume and sunflowers and lemons all things orange yellow red gold pretty hues like the sunset when you think of ocean think of the sunset and she loves those things she loves gifts mm -hmm. what else is there about her there's so much there's also the story of her and Ogun there's the Orisha. They needed him to come out of the woods. A male Orisha. They needed him to come out of the woods so that things could keep growing, could keep, because you know they won't keep growing without a part of him, without the man, without the masculine either. So they needed him to come out of the woods, and I'm intentionally not saying names of certain Orishas because I have a lot going on in my office, and I just I don't like to blend. But anyway, there is. She needed to get him out of the woods. And everybody had gone in and tried. Shango had gone in and tried. All the other Orishas had gone in to try. To try to get him out, right? This is another one that people use to, to over... This is one that people use to oversex her. So let, let's explain it. So she goes into the woods to get him after all the other... There's a 401 Orishas. She goes into the woods to try to coax him out. Everybody else has gone to try to coax him out. So she goes. It's her turn. Or she volunteers. However it happens, she ends up there. And she doesn't try to coax him out. She goes into the woods. And she's doing her own thing. Ignoring him. Didn't approach him. She's ignoring him and she's dancing and she's moving her arms and her waist in a very fluid way. And she is the water and she is 
all about her and loving and loving and loving and loving and loving herself and she he comes to her she gets in the he's sitting by the river and she's in the river and she's dancing in the water and she's splashing around and having fun and smiling and enjoying her life without him and they say she takes when he comes she doesn't say anything she doesn't tell him you have to come out of the woods now she takes honey from her jar that is attached to her waist and they say she puts it on his mouth and look okay so when people hear she took her she took honey from her waist and placed it on his lips they're thinking she took the witness from her vagina and placed it on her on his lips that's not the case she gave him a taste of her joy she gave him a taste of her peace she gave him a taste of the abundance of happiness that she had she shared that with him she gave him that energy that sweet that honey that energy that love that flow that's what she gave him she didn't put up on his lips that's not what she did that's not uh, people anyway humans the way they think things sometimes anyway and if she did do that there would be nothing wrong with it but that's not what she did and then she still did not tell him okay i'll let you taste my honey now you gotta come with me no she let him taste the joy she let him taste the honey she let him taste the sweetness of life and then she left him with his taste of honey and his taste of joy and his taste of happiness and free flowingness and he followed because who just wants a taste of that who does not want a lifetime of that okay and they were together for a while after that but anyway so that's how that story is that's that's that story that's one of the other stories there's a couple of other ones out there where she's done similar things, but it's always, she's never the aggressor, okay? So, um, if you need something to come to you without you having to chase it, something like love, fertility, wealth, she'll move for you in a very, tasteful way. She's not like Oya. Oshun will take her time at the bank and convince the people to give it to you without saying anything. It will just be something in your aura, but it may take a little longer. Oya, the one I did the video on yesterday, she's she just, she gonna go get it. That's what it is. I love them both. But Oshun, when she gets... Okay, so she is a protector of hearts. If you want somebody... If you are having a love issue where somebody just won't get right, you call on Oshun. She'll work on... She'll, she'll, she'll move their heart for you. If their heart is movable. If they have any love for you at all, she can adjust for you. I don't typically do that because I think you should allow people to be who they are. And you don't make anybody do anything. So if there is someone, you can, you can. But at the end of the day, is it worth it? And that's not really beneficial for me to say as the good witch. Because people come to me all the time and want me to do love stuff for them. Can I do it? Absolutely. Will I do it? Sometimes, depending. I'll read you first. And we'll decide if it's even worth it. Because I'll never do anything that puts you in a position to harm someone. But anyway. Um... When she's angry, the same way she smiles with joy and glee when she's happy, she has a sinister smile when she's angry. She is the Orisha that will smile and laugh with you while she, as she ends her life. She'll be smiling and dancing as uh, uh, she'll be smiling and dancing as the river as she allows it to overflow and flood the land. Because she's not going to drown. But she will flood the earth and destroy the crops 
or cause droughts and bring the water in. Um, but when she's appeased and you apologize, she's very forgiving. When you appease and she's appeased and you apologize and you give her offerings and you buy her gifts and you have your oranges and you have your lemons and you have your oils and you have your yellow, red, orange, gold candles and you adorn her and you, you know, you make peace with her. She causes the rain to cease and the waters to reside. She's forgiving. She doesn't hold grudges. But she is, can be sensitive and slightly temperamental. So when you fuck up, I'm trying not to say that word, when you mess up, she will, she will lash out at you like a coquette. She throws temper tantrums when she's upset. She's very protective of her children. So if you're dating one of the children of Oshun, be careful how you treat her. Don't lie to her. Don't cheat on her. If you have to be, if you are thinking and debating about being with someone else, be open and honest with her. That would be better than lying to her and hurting her. Give her the choice and you'll have better results. If you hurt her, there could be dire consequences. Hopefully that you could recover from, but in some cases, not so much because you never know who drowns in a flood. She is not as vengeful as some of the other Orisha, but she's still not one to be played with. Remember that her energy is not that of sex. It is of seduction. It is of sensuality. It is of beauty. And I don't know how you could ever live a life without water when your body is almost 70% water. The earth is more than half water. How do you live life? How did they expect life to continue without water, without love? Bees love what they do. That is why they pollinate flowers. They love the honey. So they make, so they go get the pollen and keep everything growing. Animals mate. Animals love each other too. Just like people do. When you have sex, some people just have sex, but when it's really good, you're making love. If that wasn't a thing, life couldn't continue. Oshun is also in control of your, she's the area of your lower abdomen. Basically around your, uh, probably around your sacral chakra area, your lower abdomen. A lot of your creativity, a lot of your passion, a lot of your instincts come from here. Because you want to operate in love. She's also the youngest of the Orisha, which is why she probably does have that temper tantrum issue and is very coquettish and is gifted a lot. She was the baby. So if you get on the bad side of Oshun, you'll have love conflicts. You'll have money issues. Your ego and your pride will get in the way of your love You're vain, you'll be very vain. This is someone who takes on the negative attributes of Oshu. Instead of the love, they take on the vanity. Because she knows who she is and she knows that she's amazing and she loves flowing in that. But there is a big difference in between flowing in your amazingness and looking down at everyone else. I can be amazing all over here by myself and not realize what's going on with anybody else. That's an Oshun energy. That's a positive Oshun energy. Piss her off. It's a whole nother situation. Okay. All right. So this has been a teachable moment with the good witch. 
Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions or any insights or any other valuable information, please drop it in the comments. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Peace, love, prosperity from Good Witch.